Welcome to another Sunnyside design tutorial. Today we are going to use a method using salt wash to transform this um, console table into a nice coastal, airy, beachy look. Right now it is has a nice sheen to it um, and it's just this dark color that I don't really like. I picked it up on our local classifieds for $40 so you couldn't beat that price. So we're just going to do our magic today with the salt wash and show you how we can transform it to look like a nice relaxed coastal piece. For our first step we are going to just give this piece a light sanding just to get rid of some of that sheen so that the first layer of paint will adhere properly. We both have sanders today just so we can speed up the process and we have a medium grit sandpaper on so we will just do that quick and let come back for the next uh, step. <laughs> the table has been sanded. We weren't worrying too much about getting the color off of the table. We just wanted to remove the sheen from the surface. So it took maybe 15 minutes to do the entire piece. Um, didn't take too long at all. Um, the directions on the salt wash do say that you don't need to do any prep work like that, that it should bond, but sanding it just gives me a little bit of peace of mind that it will stick um, and adhere properly. Um, so once the piece is sanded, we took a damp cloth and just wiped all of the dust away, make sure it's clean. Uh, the next step we're going to do is the first layer of the salt wash. So here I have my salt wash product. It is just a fine powder that has sea salt in it. And it does have a slight blue color to it, um, but it does not change the color of this process. So whatever color of paint you're using, um, your product will stay true to that color. This will not change that. So I have my paint here, my salt wash, a mixing bucket, and a stir stick. Um, the nice thing with salt wash, you can use this with any paint, oil paint, um, latex, all sorts of different kinds of paints, different colored kinds of sheens, eggshell satin, glossy, it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you want. So um, I'm just gonna pour my paint into my bucket here. For mixing the salt wash together, you want to do about a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's a little bit of guesswork unless you have exact things to measure with. And then when you stir in the salt wash, you're gonna want the batter, the batter, you guys, I cannot talk today. You're gonna want the consistency of your salt wash mixture to be like a thick cake batter or a frosting. And when I get it all mixed up, I'll show you what it looks like. And stir it in really well. I'm gonna show it. So it's starting to get a little bit thicker. You do kind of feel like you're baking a cake. It is kind of that, to me it's like a thick brownie batter. And then some of their suggestions at Salt Wash to know if it's the right consistency is lifting up your stick and if it barely drips just like that then you know that it's thick enough so we are ready to go okay now we're to the fun part we get to actually start painting with the salt wash um it's just this thick paint mixture that we've made up here and you're just going to apply it on your piece in a glob like motion and if you can see close enough you can see that it has tall ridges and peaks. That is exactly what you're going for. So salt wash is a fun method to use if you're a little bit nervous to maybe paint your first piece of furniture, you're a little unsure of what you're doing because um, the end result of this piece is made to look aged and worn and weathered and these tall peaks and ridges that you're creating are just gonna give it that effect and I think anybody can do this. It's pretty simple to do. So once this surface is done, we'll come back and show you the next step. 
As you can see that this technique is really quite simple that even a seven-year-old can do it. And she's having fun. And she is having a good old time. She always wants to be able to help paint. So we have coat, put a coat of paint on the entire surface of the table here um, with this glob-like motion. When it's kind of dried a little bit, this is kind of a tricky part to tell, but you'll just want to test with your brush. You're going to want to take your brush and just lightly go over your paint so it smooths down those high peaks. You still want them to be there. You just want the paint on your table to be more of a level surface but still kind of rough and rigid. So just go through your entire piece, smooth down those tall peaks and crevices. We painted the table in a couple of minutes, really, and then it was ready to take these peaks down. So you'll just have to play with your um, piece of furniture and see when you think the paint is ready. If it's too dry and your peaks are not smoothing down, looks we got a lot of paint right there. I'm just gonna take it off. If your um, peaks are not smoothing down, then just simply wet your paintbrush and smooth over those peaks with a wet paintbrush. Then you just let this dry, and when it's completely dry, we'll show you our next step. The table has dried. We have um, slightly gone over the top with the brush to smooth down the high peaks. Now we're going to do a second layer with the dabbing motion with a couple of different colors. I've got this kind of, I don't even know what color to call it, kind of, I don't know, aqua with a little green. This one's more aqua. Also, pay attention to this brush here. It's pretty hashed. Um, if you're doing this method, make sure you use an older brush because it kind of beats it up. So your brush may look like that at the end if it's new. So be careful with that. So we're just gonna do this same process again. Um, you can do the entire surface again if you want, or you can just do it in a couple of different spots. And then during the final step of the project, you'll see what this is going to do. This poor, poor brush, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it's doing the job, so it's okay. Look what a mess we've made, you guys. <laughs> this looks hideous. I know it does. It was kind of awkward painting it like this. But you're going to see the finished product is going to look amazing. So we've kind of just dabbed on those two colors in random spots using the same glob-like motion. We're going to let these dry mostly, and then we'll take the brush and smooth out those high peaks again. And then we'll do our final coat of paint. And we're just about to the part where the magic is going to happen. But yes, I know it looks hideous. So it, it really does. But don't be scared. It's going to turn out great. All right. This awful masterpiece here has dried overnight. And I'm just going to show you the detail. You can see that we have smoothed down the tall ridges and peaks, and we are ready for the next step. For the next step, you're just going to take the paint color of your choice. I have my trusty bear here, which I love. It's um, color matched to a Sherwin-Williams pure white. And for this, you're just going to paint back and forth uh, against the grain of the wood, which you can't really see anymore. But you're going to paint back and forth normally no more dabbing it on do your entire piece like this let it fully dry and we'll show you the last step and this is where the magic happens doesn't this table look so much better already no more camouflage it's a little less scary we've given the table one coat of white paint remember we did normal brush strokes with that and then what's we, our next step? <laughs> we have let that completely dry. In fact, we let it just cure overnight to make sure it was totally dry before we do the fun part of sanding. 
And this is the step that's really gonna make this piece come to life and you'll see why we had all those colors underneath. So here we go. I was just gonna tell you, we're using a fine sandpaper. It's 220 grit. The table is now finished. We've brought it up into the master bedroom. Um, the original table has this faux glass front that you could open the drawer and put things in there to decorate with. I did not personally like that look. So we have taken an old tray that's weaved. I found at the vintage store, painted them white and cut it to size and we just stuck them in each of the drawer fronts and they fit pretty snug so I didn't even need to use glue. The top of the table has all these colors that we've sanded down previously and it is smooth to the touch. Again, it just looks like it's been around for a long time, been painted a lot of different colors, used for a lot of different things. I like that aged and worn look. This finish requires no top coat because we used latex paint. Thanks for watching another Sunnyside design tutorial. Please visit our website at tothesunnyside.com for more DIY ideas. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. And as always here at Sunnyside Design, we hope to bring your home to the sunny side of the street.